All right, time to move on because Tesla deliveries, they came in short of expectations as the EV giant faces ongoing supply chain challenges and factory shutdowns. However, despite these headwinds, Tesla reporting June 2022 as the highest vehicle production month in the company's history. So for more on this, let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman. And Rick, so it's an important milestone perhaps, but also a little bit of disappointment in this latest report. Yeah, Tesla sounds like a regular old dinosaur automaker at this point. <laughs> Uh, trying to you know burnish their uh, disappointing quarterly number but by just pointing to that june number but overall for the quarter they were uh down 18 percent and importantly of course they were uh down compared to estimates so we're, we're seeing the stock down here uh elon musk has pre-explained this if you will i mean uh he has said they're still really working hard to get the new factory in austin texas up and running and uh berlin as well and then of course they had those uh, COVID shutdowns at their Shanghai factory, which at this point you could argue is their, is their most important. Um, so Tesla cl clearly just suffering from two things. One, it's got two new um, important new facilities that are just getting started and then shutdowns in China. So that could be reason to expect a rebound from Tesla in the uh, third quarter. And Rick, we're also getting some other news from uh, the other automakers. Ford down about four or five percent today uh, on the news that it did not meet its sales projections. What, are, what kind of trends are you seeing right now as these figures roll in, and especially with respect to the supply chain problems that we've been tracking? They can't build enough uh, is basically the story. Uh, th there are still uh, uh, computer chip, microchip problems within the supply chain. It seems to be easing in uh, other types of consumer products, such as uh, electronics and computers. We're seeing um, sales of those uh, uh, sales growth decline uh, because I guess people bought enough of that stuff and now uh, consumer patterns are shifting away from the stuff you can easily order online over to services and maybe toward big ticket items. But the automakers have not been able to build enough cars for, uh, for about the last 12 to 18 months. And that story continues. The hot cars, the, the electrics mainly like the uh, Ford F-150 Lightning and the uh, the uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E, um, they're selling every one of those they can get and taking orders way in advance. Same for the new electric Hummer that's just starting uh, to roll out soon. Uh, but they just can't build enough of them. So um, this, this uh, supply bottleneck in the auto industry, uh, I, I thought it would be easing by now, but it's not. And it could it's going to go on well into 23 and possibly 2024. Rick, I want to shift gears, sticking with transportation, but forget about the EVs now. we got to talk about the ice market and crude oil, which is having its worst day in weeks. What, any updates on the, front, on the political front in terms of political pressure towards getting suppliers of crude oil to ramp up their production or maybe tap the strategic petroleum reserve as we approach these midterm elections where energy prices very, very uh, front and center? The, the strategic reserve is tapped out. Um, we we have a lot of oil coming out of the strategic reserve every day. Biden got that started in November, and that uh, release is going to go all the way through uh, November. Um, so Biden, uh, last couple of days, once again, criticized retailers for keeping their uh, gasoline prices too high, even though the uh, price of the uh, commodity input crude oil has fallen by about 15%. And um, Biden's got a problem here because we are we are maxed out at gasoline refining capacity here in the United States. Uh, so it's not as if anybody's hoarding supplies along the supply chain. The uh, companies that create that produce gasoline are producing every drop they can. We are seeing capacity. It's close to record highs and it's in the high, it's in the mid to high 90s. I mean, you really can't get capacity higher than that. Uh, so um, Biden has to hope that a couple of things could happen. He is going to Saudi Arabia uh, this month. He's probably going to be seeing if he can get uh, the Saudis and some other Middle Eastern countries to put more oil on the market. There's a possibility Iranian oil could come back on. We just heard that from the prior guest. A couple other things could happen. Biden's problem is he just does not, there's just not much he can personally do. So um, I think we'll see what happens with this Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabian trip in a couple of weeks. I think that is maybe the number one geopolitical thing to look at at this point. Um, but look, with this Russia-Ukraine war showing no signs of ending 
this year, who knows even next year, that is going to keep just keep a, a floor under oil prices. Yeah, it, it certainly seems that way. And Saudi Arabia really being that swing producer. And it's worth noting that that meeting that we're talking about, that is a forthcoming between President Biden and the, I guess, uh, Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salman there. That was announced one month ago after OPEC Plus raised its production for the per first time in over a year. Yahoo Finance's uh, Rick Newman, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah.